Welcome to the Journal Editorial Report. I'm Paul Gigo. Democrats this week trying to salvage their plan to have banks report customer account information to the IRS. Under a revised proposal, banks would be required to provide data on accounts with total annual deposits or withdrawals worth more than $10,000, rather than the $600 threshold that was proposed at first. Billed as a way to catch high-earning tax cheats, Democrats say the reporting is necessary to close the so-called tax gap and help pay for President Biden's multi-trillion dollar Build Back Better plan. But whether it's $600 or $10,000, critics say nothing has changed when it comes to protecting taxpayer privacy. Joining me now is Pennsylvania Senator Pat Toomey. He's the top Republican on the Banking Committee. Senator, welcome again. Good to see you. Now, the nice Treasury, nice Treasury Department says, what's the problem here? Only two numbers, <laughs> inflow, outflow, no big deal, no intrusion. Uh, do you agree? It, well, so first of all, it's going to capture virtually every American. Uh, I mean, gosh, just housing and groceries alone would exceed $10,000 a year for the vast majority of Americans. Here's the thing that I find most disturbing about this, Paul. What is this going to tell the IRS about a person's taxable income? Absolutely nothing. There, this, <laughs> the, the IRS is going to get two numbers. It doesn't know whether either of them represent income or deductible expenses or anything else. It knows nothing about it. And so it seems to me very clear that this is the precursor to the next step. The next step is the IRS saying, well, gee, you know, we really don't get enough information from these two numbers. We're going to need a granular breakdown of how they get to these numbers. So I, I think this is a terrible idea, a terrible I invasion of privacy that's going to get much, much worse and we should try to stop it. Well, so I want to push it back on you a little bit because their defense of the administration is, well, look, uh, uh, what this will do, what these numbers will do is say if you have $15,000 in outflows or even 50, but aha, you have a big, suddenly a big check, 10, 10 million is the example they used, then we'll be able to say that looks suspicious and then we can go after that person's, uh, we'll trigger an audit, I guess, that person's income. So it, we're only going after these people who have really uh, extraordinary differences between the outflows uh, and uh, inflows or, or, or some signal like that. Well, well first of all, if they, if they were sincere about that, then why would they establish a threshold at 10,000, a threshold that is clearly going to capture virtually all Americans? And, you know, that's not the way our system is based, that you have to pass on all of your financial institution to the IRS for them to tell you what you owe. Uh, I, I think this is a bad start, and it's going to lead to even worse subsequent steps. Is, do you think that the real goal here is just to trigger literally tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of more tax audits each year? I, I think it's that, um, I, I, but but I really think it is to set up the uh, the the predicate for the next step, which is much more invasive invasive uh, reporting when they acknowledge that this level doesn't give them quite enough granularity. Okay, all right. Let's turn to the uh, tax bill moving through Congress. Looks like the president says that the uh, corporate tax rate. Uh, increase that he has wanted may be dead because of Democratic and Republican opposition. But the Global Tax Treaty, which I know you follow closely, of a global minimum tax that uh, Treasury Secretary Yellen is working on, that's still part of the mix. And the Secretary has said she wants to put that into the reconciliation bill. But is that the way to handle a tax treaty? So this is very problematic at multiple levels, Paul. You know, the, admission, the administration has implicitly admitted that this global tax uh, that they want to impose on American multinationals puts us at a competitive disadvantage if, at a minimum, the rest of the world doesn't follow suit. Well, the rest of the world hasn't followed suit yet. They want to go ahead with it. But it gets worse because the rest of the world, this deal that they've negotiated by which the rest of the world is indicating that they might impose a global minimum tax. By the way, it's lower than the one the administration wants to impose. So even if they get their way, we're at a competitive disadvantage. But more importantly, this was part of a bigger deal. And the bigger deal was that we would allow the rest of the world to tax American tech companies uh, uh, on based on 
sales into overseas countries. We, we've never done this with our tax policy before, but that, that's a huge win for these other countries. It'll be a revenue transfer from the U.S. Treasury to their treasuries, but that is very problematic for the administration because that mo that's a modification of our treaties. And as you know, ratification of a treaty requires a two-thirds vote in the Senate. Right. They're not going to have two-thirds votes in the Senate to do this. So if the rest of the world isn't going to get this piece of, uh, of flesh from uh, American companies that the Biden administration is willing to give them, then will they be willing to carry through on the increase in their global minimum tax, which was something they never were enthusiastic about in the first place? It's all very unclear and all a good reason why they should not go ahead and impose these huge tax increases. Well, if you're, you're sitting in the Senate, you, 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 kinda, you know your colleagues, is there any way that you guys can defeat this global tax deal or is it going to be a fait accompli if they can get this into the reconciliation bill? So th this is a real challenge for Republicans because, of course, we're not embracing like some other version of a massive tax and spending bill. Um, so it comes down to whether there are a, a single Democrat or at least a, or preferably more than one, but but some Democrats who will say we really shouldn't put multinationals headquartered in the U.S. at a systematic disadvantage to the rest of the world. That's the voice we need to hear from the Democratic side. All right. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Senator Toomey. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming in. When we come Thanks back.